Uh, coming to the stage next is Aaron, uh, Aaron, Terry Lomax, who gets the award for having the most badass title. I'm sure you've seen this, right? It is Save the Drama for Your Mama. She reached right back to the 80s or 90s for that, I forget. But five strategies for resolving team and community conflicts tactfully. Terry is a blogger, speaker, and brand strategist who empowers women who struggle with tech to leverage social media and personal branding to grow their audience and impact. She also manages a flourishing online community of more than 4,000 ambitious women on a mission via the Mocha Girls Pit Stop blog, say that five times, where she is a woman of color, where, where, where women of color refuel on motivation and ignite their lives. Let's give it up for Terry Lomax. Come on now. <laughs> Woo! Thank you so much, everyone. I'm super excited to be here today, and I'm really excited for the topic that I'm going to be speaking about as well. But before I get started, I just want to share with you a little bit about my career and journey, just to give you some context, because I know that it says in the agenda that I'm a customer success manager at Asana, and um, that doesn't necessarily relate to community. So about six years ago, I found myself in the midst of a quarter-life crisis. I was in grad school at the time, and I followed the well-intentioned advice that every mentor, advisor, and school counselor gave me. And you've probably heard this as well, right? Go to school, get good grades, get a good job. So guess what I did? I went to school, I got good grades, I even got two degrees, and I got a good job. But I was still unfulfilled, and I knew that there was more to life than just going to work every day to pay back these student loans, right? And so what I decided to do was, I realized that, one, there was a need in my community. I was struggling with low self-esteem, depression, and anxiety, and some personal issues based on my upbringing. And so instead of complaining about the lack of spaces for me and women that look like me, I decided to go out and create that space. And so six years ago, I created the Mocha Girls Pit Stop blog, which is the blog where women of color were fueled on motivation and ignite their lives. And six years later, this blog has grown into an international movement of women on a mission to become their best selves. So to give you some context, that's why I'm here. I manage communities as well as doing customer success management for Asana. Oh, there we go. All right, so imagine that you are moving to a new city 3,000 miles away from home. You don't know anyone. And in addition to trying to get adjusted and acclimated to this new city, you are also job searching. Can you say stressful? Stressful much? Yes. I see like, yes, I remember those days. So you're moving to this new city, but the good thing is after sending out numerous emails and the random LinkedIn email messages and sending, you know, going to networking events and just sending emails to friends and getting feedback about how you can get a job, you finally get a job. You finally get an offer, right? And so you get a call from a startup in San Francisco and they tell you that they are searching for a community manager. And you are the lucky community manager. You get the role and you're super excited. So you start your job, you're flourishing the role, but wait, there's more. Let me hear someone say, but wait, there's more. Wait, there's more. There is more. You get started and you realize that you are replacing an industry vet. Right? So you're coming to this new role, you're replacing someone that's an industry vet, but also everyone loves her. You know how it is, right? That person that everyone loves. You have to go and fill these big shoes. And so you're in the role. You're doing your best. You're flourishing. Can someone say, but wait, there's more? Wait, there's more. There is more. And so in addition to this, you're three months into your role, and you find out that the company is closing down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but wait, there's more. Seriously, there really is more. In addition to that, you also find out that the virtual currency that the company was using an app so that people can swap their items, it's gonna become obsolete. Yeah, and you have to transition the community through this closing and all these other transitions. Can someone say ouch? Yeah, so that was my life about two years ago. And the good thing is I'm gonna share with you how you can navigate that difficult situation. All right, so let's stay tuned. I know that you probably have some tough community uh, situations or conflicts as well. And so I want you to think about one of the toughest community conflicts that you've had and think about the way that you felt. How did you feel? Just shout out a few random feelings. 
One more time. Stressed. Anxious. Stupid. Sorry. Angry. Annoyed. Overwhelmed. Did you feel as though you had the tools and the, the resources to help you navigate that conflict? Did you feel, oh, oh gosh. Okay, good. I'm so glad we're going to cover this content today. Did you feel that you had? Oh, Wasn't expecting that one, but that's good. So here's the thing. Conflict often gets a bad rep, right? We often hear conflict and we're like, oh my gosh, conflict, we'd run and hide, right? But the thing about conflict is that oftentimes conflict is just what we need to be that catalyst for our team to you know, actually go out and explore those new ideas that we hear about. Conflict is sometimes needed to change up the status quo. And so today my goal is to share with you some tips and tools that will allow you to sort of up-level your current conflict resolution strategies, all right? So before we get started, I have a few ground rules. We're community managers, we have to have ground rules, right? So I have a few ground rules for you, for us, but I need your help. So the first ground rule, I'm gonna need you to repeat after me. This is a conversation. Let's try that one more time. This is a conversation. Not a presentation. All right, so what that means is I'm going to engage you in conversation. I'm going to ask you questions. I'm going to give you some eye contact. We're going to have a conversation today. Uh, yeah, great, I love it. I love it. Yes, that's right. We're going to have a conversation. Now, here's the thing. Raise your hand if you've ever spoken to someone and you're having a good conversation, but then it feels like you're speaking to a brick wall. Anyone? Yes? Okay. So don't do that to your new friend, Terry. This is a conversation. So I'm going to give you my energy. We're going to engage each other in conversation. Now, the second ground rule. We all know the Vegas rule, right? What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. So we're going to do the opposite of the Vegas rule for the purpose of this conversation. So what happens in this conversation does not stay in this conversation. So be sure to use the hashtag CMX Summit. Share any insights that you gain, any epiphanies that you have. Take pictures, do all that good stuff. Let's make sure to share this content with other folks, all right? Now, I'm not bossy, I swear, though my husband would beg to differ. But I want to give you an opportunity to share any ground rules that you want to add. Anyone? Awesome. All right, let's keep moving. <laughs> so what we're going to do first is we are going to touch on four key strategies to proactively curb conflict before it begins. So before we dive into the strategies, let's just talk about what you can do right now before all the drama that we're going to save for our mama comes up, OK? All right, so number one, set expectations early on. The more time you invest on the front end, the smoother your community will run when it's in operations mode. So get those ground rules out there. Make sure to set your community standards. Let your community know how you expect for them to behave in the community and also what they can expect from you before anything goes down, right? They always have this frame of reference or this point of reference that they can refer to. Number two, get grounded on or in your mission. What is the purpose of your community and what are your non-goals? And when you think about your mission, try to get that out to the community as much as possible, of course, when appropriate. You don't want to like annoy them with it, but you do want to make sure that folks know why they're there, they know what the purpose is, they know what the mission is, so that everyone can kind of be in line and on the same page. Now, when it comes to non-goals, I know some of you are like, what are you talking about, Terry? What are non-goals? Let me tell you. So non-goals, if you don't know, are potential goals that you aren't necessarily going to focus on at this time. So I'll give you a quick example. Let's say that you manage a community where you're, you're connecting like-minded vegans, right? One of your non-goals, yeah, we've got some vegans in the house. I aspire to be you one day. So, <laughs> so I do, I'm so, so serious. So one of your non-goals in the community might be to focus on fitness routines and best practices for personal training and things like that. It could potentially be a goal in the future, but right now you want to just focus on connecting those like-minded vegans, sharing maybe meals and meal prepping tips, but you don't really want to focus on that other aspect at this time. So it's really important to let your community know what, the, what your mission is and also what those non-goals are. All right, number three. Let me hear someone say number three. Get buy-in and make this part of the approval process. I mean, before your prospective members come into the community, let them know, one, what you expect from them, but also have them sign off on it. This makes, it, this makes your job a lot easier because in the future, if you do have issues, you can always point back to the community standards and say, you signed this. I, I didn't 
forced you, you signed this, you agreed to this right here, right? So it's always great because you can keep folks accountable and they've already signed off on it. We've, we all know what it's like, right? We've signed off on those cell phone contracts and those other stuff, loans, all that good stuff that some people don't read, no judgment, but we're gonna keep moving there. All right, number four, get ahead of the game. Empower your community with conflict resolution strategies before the drama begins. So maybe have a one pager or a few tips and tools that they can refer to so that when conflict does arise at some point, which it may, right, it probably will, which is okay, they have something in place so they know what to do and they don't run to you and you know, interrupt everything that's going on and kind of stress you out. They already have what they need and they'll be equipped for that. Okay. So here's the thing, sometimes when we see conflict, the, our first reaction is, great, here we go, right? Can anyone relate to that? Great, here we go. Now my goal by the end of this conversation is to move you from great, here we go, to great, here we go, okay? Because great is an acronym for the tools that we are gonna discuss today. So I just wanna test this out and see if you can ground yourself in positivity, confidence, and enthusiasm. And on the count of three, we are going to say, great, here we go, all right? <coughs> okay, conversation, okay, there we go. All right, one, two, three. Great, here we go. I love it. So the next time you see conflict, the next time you're faced with conflict, what will you say? Great, here we go. I love it. Okay, so really quick, let's do a little refresher. So the next time you see conflict, what are you going to say? Great, here we go. Great, here we go. There we go. I love it. All right, let's talk about our first strategy here. Get out in front of the problem. Our goal as community managers, we want to address the elephant in the room before the community addresses it, right? So as soon as something happens, Try to figure out, okay, what, the, what is the issue here? What's going on? What went wrong? And how can I get out in front of the problem and address this in a way where the community, they feel confident, they feel comfortable, and they know that my community manager got this, right? My community manager got this. Okay, so let's take a look at our first case study here. I'm gonna read this quote from a community manager. I arrived to work one day and found there was a messy thread in the community with several members. The comments were flowing in faster than I could type. Can anyone relate? Been there, done that, right? So an example, a way that you would get out in front of the problem might be to one, cut off the comments as soon as possible, right? Also, you might want to, again, do some investigation, figure out what's going on, and post your own update and maybe pin it to your community if you have the ability to do so, and let folks know that you're aware of the problem, you're trying to diffuse the situation, and let them know that you are working on it because you got this. Because when you see conflict, what do you say? Great. Exactly. You're equipped, you got this. Let's take a look at case study number two highlights. So SmartSwap is an online app where people buy and sell their used items. The company called an emergency meeting and announced they'll be closing down. Also, all virtual money within SmartSwap will become obsolete. Sound familiar, right? So one way that you can get out in front of the problem, I'm gonna give you a real life example because this happened to me and it was extremely stressful. So what I decided to do was we met with the company and I tried to figure out what am I able to share with the community? What can I share with the community just yet? Once I figured out what I could share, I scheduled an AMA, Ask Me Anything, with myself and the CEO of the company, and we were just authentic. We were transparent, and we really got in front of the community to let them know that, one, we're human beings, so please be nice to us, right? Be empathetic, but in addition to that, we also provided a safe space where we could answer their questions and sort of uh, alleviate, I wanna say, their, their stressors and the things that they were thinking about and going through at the moment. All right, number two, reframe the concerns constructively. We all know that when folks are in conflict, especially when community members are having a conflict, they might not use the best language toward each other, or if the company is going through a change, they might not use the best language, right? And so our goal as community managers is to reframe the concerns constructively. So I'll give you a quick example in case study number three. I manage an online community of 2,000 members, and Sarah and Chris, two of my six moderators, are at odds. Sarah sent me a personal message claiming that Chris blocked her and doesn't respond to her public messages. Again, another personal experience. <laughs> this has actually happened. And so in this case, uh, what I decided to do to reframe their concerns constructively is when Sarah came to me and told me, 
you know, gave me a list of names that were other than Chris's names and kind of labeled Chris as a few bad names. I kind of reframed that and said, you know, Sarah, it sounds like you feel X, Y, Z, and it sounds that Chris made you feel this way, right? So instead of kind of focusing on the negative, reframe it to let them know that you are validating their concerns, you know that their feelings are valid, and try to spin it in a positive way if possible. Number three, explore possible outcomes. Let's just dive right into our next case study and I'll give you an example of what this might look like. All right, case study number four highlights. There's an active community member that trolls others in the community by constantly initiating conversations around the company's known areas for improvement. Been there, done that? Yep. The community member also contributes positively at times. So one way to explore possible outcomes might be to, instead of just writing the member off, like you're out, we're blocking you, you're out of the community, it might be helpful to have a conversation on the phone with your community member. I've actually done this and it works wonders. I mean, hopping on the phone with folks is super helpful to kind of build that connection. And you could also try to repurpose his energy. And of course you wanna address the bad behavior, but also let him know how he could be a benefit to the community. And he might even be one of your stellar moderators in the future, right? You never know. So so try to explore possible outcomes and don't just sort of shut people out as soon as you see bad behavior. See how you can possibly repurpose that energy and use it in a positive way. Number four, agree on something. We're gonna revisit one of our case studies here for this tip, and we're gonna take a look at case study number two with smart swap. So when it comes to agreeing on something, I told you I went through this really tough situation where our company was closing down and also all of the virtual money was becoming obsolete. And so in that situation, it was a very frustrating situation for myself and the community members. And so what we agreed upon was that, yes, this is frustrating. We did a very good job of validating our community members' feelings instead of trying to sort of block it out and just focus on where we were headed as a team and as a community. And so validating their feelings, agreeing that you know, you're absolutely right, this is frustrating. It wasn't really fair for them because they spent years building up this virtual capital. And so we just tried to, you know, present opportunities for promotions where they could spend their money. But I think the most important thing that we did was agree with them because there was something that we could agree upon. Now, when you agree on something, it allows you to possibly come to a solution at some point in the future. Uh, it definitely leads you to lead you in the right direction, right? Because when you're disagreeing and you focus on the things that are different, that's where you get a little tricky, right? So try to focus on the things that you have in common when you're trying to move through the conflict. Good job, you're amazing, amazing. All right, and the last but not least, we're gonna talk about thanking the parties involved. Conflict is tough for a lot of folks, and when you have those situations, when you have community members that are at odds, if they're a part of the process and they're trying to do well, they're trying to move past it uh, as constructively as, as possible, be sure to thank them when they're involved, right? It's a lot of work for them. Just imagine, and you all know this as being part of different communities as well, <clears throat> excuse me. You have lives, right? Your community members, they have lives, they have their own personal dramas that they're faced with, and so to come into this online space to communicate with other folks and they're trying to navigate a conflict positively, we definitely wanna show gratitude and let them know that we appreciate them being there and we also appreciate them being part of the process. Let me hear someone say bonus. bonus. All right, so one bonus here is the use of I statements, right? We all are familiar with I statements. They're so important when it comes to conflict. And I think this is a very good strategy and tool that you can add to your community member one sheet where you equip your community members to use the tools that you put in place to resolve conflicts. I statements are really useful because instead of placing blame on other folks, you are taking ownership for your feelings and it's really about you instead of about what the other person has done. It's more about how they made you feel, right? So I feel happy when you all say, great, here we go, right? I feel excited when you converse with me and don't just stare at me and not say anything, right? So I feel I statements are really key. You also want to use the yes and rule. I think Denise talked about this yesterday, so I'm not going to dive too deep, but it's super helpful. If you're ever in a situation where you're trying to brainstorm ideas or your community members are sharing insight or something that you may not necessarily agree with, use the yes and rule to, one, validate what they're saying, right? So yes, that may not be a great idea, so we won't go in that direction, but yes, and maybe we can do this, right? So add on to what they're saying to let them know that they're heard, you heard them out, you value what they're saying, and you also wanna add on your own ideas to what they've shared with you. 
awesome. Thank you so much for your engagement today. This was absolutely amazing. Thank you.